recognized a part of yourself that was never really explored. Hey there, thanks for coming by. Welcome. This is Whistlekick Martial Arts Radio. My name's Jeremy Lesniak, and today I'm joined by Ms. Shelley Devine. You probably know Whistlekick. We're the ones known for making great sparring gear, fun apparel, some training accessories, and honestly, a ton of websites. More than I can go into right now. So the best place to start is whistlekick.com. That's where you can get links to everything we've got going on. Of course, if you want the show notes featuring links, photos from our episodes, sometimes videos, and a ton more. Oh, transcripts. We don't talk about that too often. There are transcripts you can read right there while you're playing the episode or download as a PDF. You know, we make it accessible for you. Those are all over at whistlekickmartialartsradio.com. Today's guest is fairly local. She's just a couple hours away from me, Boston, Massachusetts area. And we spend a lot of time talking about women in the martial arts. We talk about women in MMA, some of the folks that she looks up to in mixed martial arts, and her interesting journey that has left her starting over a couple times, rediscovering the love of being a perpetual student, and all of the wonderful things that have led her to where she's at in life and as a martial artist. So let's welcome her to the show. Ms. Devine, welcome to Whistlekick Martial Arts Radio. Hi, Jeremy. <laughs> it's <laughs> nice to meet you. <laughs> well, it's nice to meet you, too. Listeners, this this is one of those where, you know, it's it's a referral. Like most of our episodes, it's a referral, either a listener or a past guest. And so other than the, let's see, what, what does Skype say? The seven minutes or so that we've been on the phone, we haven't spoken. So <laughs> I'm in the same boat as all the listeners. I'm going to take this ride with them and learn all about you and your journey through the martial arts. Okay. Well, it's funny that, you know, I'm in the middle of developing a podcast and how I came to you through a referral was I was interviewing one of your listeners who's a black belt who used to be one of my students many, many years ago when um, I was... Uh, I was actually a yoga instructor and um, and then also training in martial arts, but then teaching like a cardio kickboxing class. And she went on to become a black belt. So there you go. Yeah. <laughs> I know. It's funny how things, um, uh, you know, wind around and you end up in places like I'm in the hot seat right now being, you know, the interviewee. And instead of the interview. Yeah. It's weird, isn't it? It's very interesting. <laughs> I mean, I've been in the seat before, but in a different context and not about so much about myself. But um, but it is funny doing it this way. Um, I've been on video before and then I've also spoken um, uh, years ago when women's mixed martial arts um, was coming up when, you know, the women were just getting into the cage and uh, speaking to, oh God, what was his name? Um, Goldman. He does, he does um, the No Holds Barred podcast, I think. Do you, do you recall that at all, I, Jeremy? I, I don't, but keep talking and I'll see if I can look yeah, it Yeah. I mean, it was some time ago and he interviewed me after I, I had been in New York watching, um, uh, well, actually photographing and writing an article about um, uh, women's Muay Thai uh, fight in mm. New York. You know, like they didn't they didn't have MMA in New York, but they would allow for the uh, the Muay Thai kickboxing. So I was there watching that and photographing some of the women there and um, also, um, you know, interviewing some of them, writing a little article about, you know, women fighting. And it was a, it was just strictly a women's show, which was kind of unusual at that time. Oh, cool. Eddie yeah. Goldman? Does that name sound Eddie, right? Yes, Eddie Goldman. Okay. Yes. Yeah, yeah. I couldn't think of his last, uh, his first and last name, but yeah, he he he's been he was kind of like the uh, the first podcaster that I can ever really remember before, like even Joe Rogan's out there, you know, and um, people would listen to him. You know, he was really pretty much the only show that I thought was kind of around. Yeah, it's you know it's fun to go back to some of those early days of podcasting because you had to work for it. 
You had to yeah. work to produce it and you had to work to listen to it for the most part. There weren't the convenient options that, you know, you and I were talking a, a little bit before we went live here that, you know, th- there is some work that goes into this, but, you know, really at the end of the day, it's about consistency. It's about the relationships you build and getting the guests and the content, the technical stuff, which 10 years ago was the limiting factor is not the limitation now. Not at all. It's it's become so much easier, you know, to be able to do it. I mean, last year when I started, even um, I had help from uh, a friend of mine who was a videographer and he knew sound. So he had all the microphones and he had all the I don't know, all the gear and the contraptions. And I don't know what he did, but he'd put a mic in front of my in front of my mouth and and I would talk and I we had guests and he would put mics in front of them, them, you know, in front of them and they would talk and and then he would go back to shop and I didn't know what would happen, and how he would put it all together. <laughs> <laughs> it's clueless. And I'm learning that now. And I was like, oh, well, it just gets so much easier, you know, that they have all these like, I mean, you can do this on Skype now. You just need a microphone. Yeah. And the microphones are really great now, too. So it's it's really um, definitely come a long way. A very long way. In yeah. a year. Well, of course, this is not how to start a podcast about a podcast podcast (laughs) this is martial arts radio and obviously we have you on to talk about martial arts let's go back you mentioned yoga we talked a little Mm -hmm. bit before we started about kickboxing but let's go back all the way to the beginning Mm -hmm. when did you start martial arts I started late in life. Um, I started, well, actually, my daughter, uh, when she was young, uh, probably in elementary school, wanted to take a karate class. So um, I think she was, geez, maybe, you know, first grade, second grade. And one of her uh, friend's parents was opening a school that was local to us. So I was like, oh, well, you know, let's go over and try it out. And I got the kids, both kids involved, and they loved it. And then they said that they were going to have um, a cardio kickboxing class for the women. And so I took that. And, you know, it's kind of funny, because um, I remember hitting, I still, it's a, a visceral feeling. I remember hitting a heavy bag. And I was just like, oh my God, I have to like explore this more. And as I got into just doing the cardio kickboxing class, it was a gateway for me to take the karate class. It was a goju karate. And I um, did that, learned some forms and stuff. And then it, and then there was an evening class that was more scary and there was no women in it. And, and I was like, I think I want to do that. And it was a traditional uh, jiu-jitsu class and it was with um uh, a, a ragtag kind of group of guys that didn't really have a gym and they would go around and they would oh can we you know rent space here and and use your gym in the evening and they happened to be friends with um jose alfonso who was my my karate instructor instructor and um I ended up going into that class. I mean, I remember watching it and being terrified because they actually used like real knives and real weapons. <laughs> and um, and the guys were really kind of hardcore. And the more I learned about them, the more I, I, I was like, oh, my gosh, these guys are nuts. And, so, you know, it was safe, but it actually really wasn't. It was safe under, you know, while in that um, environment of, um, the two main instructors, Jose and Bob Passerini. But if I went off with those guys to their own, like, you know, when they were out in the street, maybe training, it was not a safe environment to train (laughs) at all. These guys were a little nutty. And, but that's how I started. I, I, I got to my yellow belt with that. And then the school shut down and I was lost. I, um, I didn't have a place to go. My kids were kind of, you know, they didn't have a place and and they were kind of like, oh, I don't want to do this anymore. And um, a couple of uh, women who their kids ended up going into Hyde Park to um, it was actually kind of um, a bit of a famous um, school. It was called One Step Beyond in Boston. I don't know. Have you ever heard of it? 
the name's slightly familiar, but I can't place why. Well, Billy Blanks ah. used to teach there. That and would be why. Billy Blanks, he used yeah. to do audio kickboxing out in, out in um, you know, Hollywood or whatever. He used to teach the stars. Well, apparently, I didn't know this at the time, but he, he used to um, work there, I guess. And so um, some of the women uh, were saying, oh, you know, we know this girl that could teach a cardio kickboxing class. So I started teaching cardio kickboxing there. Um, I think Paul Asmar was the um, the owner at the time and um, stayed there for a bit. But I wasn't like I was in this place. I was like, I need to learn. And and um, I I kind of felt like um, I needed something else and I didn't know what it was. And then. Um, my old instructor, Jose, called me because he had moved to Florida. He said, Shelly, what are you doing? You know, and and I said, well, I can't find a place. And he goes, I think you'll like this place up in Woburn, Mass called Small Circle Jiu Jitsu. The guy there, Ed Mula, his great instructor. I think you'll you'll really like it. You should go up and check that place out. I, I trained there for a bit. I think you'll really like it. So I went there and I stayed there for a lot of years. I got my brown belt. Um I think I was about third degree brown belt and I was in their like little black belt club. And at that time I was opening up my yoga studio with my ex-husband, which led into we opened up a martial arts studio inside the yoga studio. So that was kind of cool. We had both things going on, but um, uh, we, you know, having a business together and all that, um, we both ended up going our separate ways. He, he took the studio and, um, made his way with that and made it into a, a great gym. It's a pretty good gym now. Uh, a lot of people go to it. And I transitioned to, um, sit your tongue, the Muay Thai kickboxing. So I went back to kickboxing and I have been there ever since that's been my home. I have my blue, blue Mon call there trained in Thailand for a little bit. I went there for a month, got to train with, um, uh, crew toy and, uh, and also, uh, got to go to Singapore and train a little bit there too, you know, just for about a month, but it was such a great experience, but that's been my pretty much my travels in, um, martial arts. Hmm. So you, here you are, you're bouncing around, you're finding your way through the world of martial arts. And I want to go back mm. to one of the first things you said that you remembered hitting that heavy bag and <laughs> needing to, I, I, I don't remember the exact word you use, explore that was, was kind of my takeaway. Yeah. What was it about that experience that it the light bulb really switched on? It, it was really visceral. It was something that, like, it's almost like um, y you recognized a part of yourself that was never really explored. And as a young girl, I can remember, you know, watching, say, Muhammad Ali uh, fight. And, you know, that was kind of something that I would watch with my dad. And I used to kind of get in fights when I was a little girl. And... um I was the one that people would come around, you know, if they were having, you know, if they were being bullied or something and I would, you know, protect them or something. And I'd have, you know, at first I talk to the person and then it would lead to, OK, fists are getting thrown and I would usually walk away. <laughs> you know, OK. And it was usually kind of even with boys. It happened with girls in my teens. Um, and I just never really I mean, I the martial arts wasn't really an option. It was only, you only saw boys doing that. You didn't see girls doing it. And so it never really, I think, you know, all those years, it really wasn't an option for me. Mm. And then when I was taking the cardio kickboxing class, you know, in, you know, I was in my late thirties and I, I just was like, wow, I'm, I, I, I loved it. I just loved it. And I wanted to explore it. And I got to, um, you know, when I, um, I think, uh, there was an instructor there. Oh gosh, I, could, I wish I could remember his name. Um, he was a boxing coach and he's like, you fought before. And I'm like, not really. He goes, well, you know how to stand. And I was like, well, it's just innately natural. I, I really had no training, but maybe it was just watching fights when I was a kid, you know, watching the boxers and stuff. And it just one thing led to another. And, and I was just so curious. And and I loved the um, 
a little bit of that adrenaline rush of being uh, fearful of, you know, the weapons attacks when I was doing the traditional jujitsu and learning all the technical aspects of things and how the body moved. And then I could relate it to a spiritual sense. So it was just kind of something that was, aha, it's all coming together. And, um, I, I, you know, how it affects your body, um, that holistic kind of effect that martial arts has where, you know, you, you're working in a circular fashion, um, uh, a bit of, you know, you have an opponent and then you have your, yourself and the opponent is only a reflection of, of something that you're fearful of anyways to begin with. And it's just kind of, a, a contrast and and that's what fighting has always been for me I'm like <laughs> or or dealing with something in martial arts when you're training it just helps to improve you in in a whole bodied sense and that bag I think just when I hit it it just brought it all to the forefront and I was like oh my god I love this mm. <laughs> you know <laughs> kind of crazy but that's I think that's the best description I can give to it it just embodied Everything that I, I felt like I, I, I wasn't, you know, experiencing in my life. How strange yeah. is that, right? <laughs> well, it is and it isn't because it's, it's not that dissimilar to what we've heard from others on this show. And, you know, without an attempt at sexism, you, you did bring it up. Mm. I think sometimes for women, this is a real thing. You know, I think this is why typically when I look into cardio kickboxing, fitness kickboxing, whatever it is, the ranks in there tend to be women. Whereas when we look at traditional martial arts, the the dynamics overall tend to flip. It is a, a male dominated pursuit, unfortunately, but here is, is kind of the more visceral, the more physical aspect in an approachable way for women. And, and I, and I think that's great. I mean, personally, I'd, I'd love to see it much more balanced on both sides, but well, it is what it is. Yeah. It's, it, it is moving in that direction. Um, it, you know, we have women now that are fighting on a male platform that, yeah. um, you know, you have in the UFC, you have women, uh, m men fighting in the same cage and women are fighting in the same cage. Um, you know, they're fighting the same sex opponents, which is, that's the way I would want it. <laughs> but, um, but it, it, it was, it's something that's new. This right. is, you know, so new. And, you know, when you look at the cardio kickboxing classes, they're just gateways for women to, um, take it to the next level sure. to enter, like say a, a, a karate class or a traditional jujitsu or a Brazilian jujitsu class or a kickboxing, a Muay Thai kickboxing class and where they would be typically afraid to do that because there's a part of them that is just not exercised. It's a part of their um, natural, raw, um, human um I was talking about this with another woman yesterday about like bringing in that aggressive side of being um, a human being. And I think it's suppressed in women. Um, and I think it has been for a very, very, very long time. And it is just maybe in the last, you know, generation of women, it's starting to really reveal itself. You see it more because it's more accepted that women are playing sports. Um, you, you know, women can play soccer, they can play baseball, they're playing football, they're playing, um, you know, we see it in tennis, but we have now we have race car drivers that are women, <laughs> you right. know, so you're seeing women doing things that were typically male dominated. But, um, you know, now it's, it, it we're seeing uh, young girls are seeing uh, that there are no limits. You're not just, you don't just have to be a hairdresser or not that that's a bad, you know, not, I'm, I'm not knocking hairdressing, but those were the only options. It was be, be a teacher, a nurse or a hairdresser or something of that, that, you know, sure. or a massage therapist. And those were really the only um, work kind of opportunities that I saw. And 
growing up and or, or be a, a mom and stay at home with the kids, which is all fine. I, I mean, I think that's a great those are great um, professions and it, there's no job tougher than being a stay at home mom. I think, you know, if you're home with kids and stuff, there's no no greater job that you could do on earth or, or even to be a father. But um, but those were the only things that maybe a young girl saw where now they could be an architect or they could be uh, a mixed martial artist and fight in a cage. <laughs> you know? And and that wasn't, you know, that that's only in my my lifetime that I've seen that in my general, you know, and, and it was later in life. You know, I'm saying like didn't start until I was in, you know, late 30s and hitting 40s. So. Yeah. Not only is, you know, say like MMA an option Mm -hmm. for women, but we had a several year period where the biggest mixed martial arts draw in the world was a woman. Mm -hmm. And there is not another sport that we've had Mm -hmm. that I'm aware of where that you've ever been able to say that people tuning in to watch Ronda Rousey. You know, yeah. this is not an MMA show and, and listeners, don't worry, we're not going to, you know, take a hard left here and really go down that path. But mm. it bears mentioning because at least in the early days, MMA folks were coming out of traditional martial arts and Ronda Rousey. I mean, maybe she's moved on to professional wrestling now, but, you know, I, I still look at her as one of ours because yeah, she came out of judo. Yes, right? absolutely. Yeah. You know, so yeah. I, I think we get we get to claim some ownership over her and what she has done for. Absolutely. She's truly a martial artist. I think, you know, you know, um, being a mixed martial artist is exploring all different types of martial artists. And that's the journey of being a martial artist. You know, sticking with one system isn't necessarily going to, um, you know, limit you, but why not explore other, other, um, you know, judo is one thing you're learning how to toss somebody around and, and learning leverage and, and learning, uh, your own body's balance. And, but then if you decide to go and learn kickboxing, that that's a whole other, you know, there's, that's a whole other way of using your body as a weapon. You know, you have eight limbs to use in a different way other than, you know, say tossing somebody in judo. So, um, there, there's a I bit of a Mai Tai, ref, Mai Tai reference in there, isn't there? <laughs> Eight yeah, limbs. yeah. Not, not, not everyone may get that reference. Yeah. That's okay. So it's just, um, um, you know, martial arts is, is, uh, offers such a, um, full spectrum of, of how to explore yourself as a human being. Um, more so than, you know, I, we touched on that. I was a yoga instructor and the only downside of it's kind of, I feel like in my own practice, um, being a yoga instructor and then being a martial artist, the two are like, okay, they, they seem like very, um, at odds with one another, but, bringing them together. I th- I think yoga is a part of mixed martial arts too, which I, I don't think uh, customarily a mixed martial artist would say that, but it is because it's another art and it's another way to move the body and to connect with source or, and I think as martial artists, that's what we're trying to do too, depending on, you know, through our bodies, through our minds, through our spirits. And, um, I don't know. Um, I think, you know, going down that road of, um, you know, women being in mixed martial arts, you know, Ronda Rousey doing what she did and she's on that platform and she created this, this, this opportunity, but she started out as, you know, um, a judo player and, uh, um, she became an Olympic athlete, but she couldn't do anything with that. And that was her love and her passion. She couldn't survive on being an Olympic athlete. And I I don't know too many martial artists unless they open a gym that can survive on just being a competitor. I I would say there are none. Yeah. And, And why is that? You know, like, it seems kind of when we're on this, this quest, and we love this kind of, um, movement in our body and it's an interactive movement and it really expresses who we are as humans to one another um it's it's like oh what do you 
how how come we can't um i i I don't know what I'm trying to say here, but it's just I'm I, I'm going down a rabbit hole. <laughs> like, you know, it's just interesting to me, and I don't know where to go with that. I, I guess. Well, you're not the first person to wonder about that. Why is it that the best of the best, when it comes to martial arts, do not have the opportunities that so many other disciplines, pursuits do? If you are the best biologist in the world you have grant money thrown at you you academic institutions will fight over you and say hey do your research we just want to support you and and maybe we you know take some some of your patents or or whatever you know that there's a there's a path there but the best martial artists in the world are not exploring martial arts they're not bettering martial arts and moving it forward as i think most of us, if we at least consider it, would wish they would. For and sure. It's, and it's because those opportunities aren't available. And hopefully in the coming years, it will be an option. And, and you know, full disclosure, that's something that we are hoping to do here at Whistlekick. We're, we are hoping to be able to take, you know, these amazing people when they retire from competition or, you know, they, they maybe they, they aren't even competitors and say, OK, you know what? You go spend the next three years and train and teach and explore and research and figure out what you want to figure out on this sort of sabbatical and then come back and share it with the rest of us. And where would traditional martial arts be now if we had done that the last 20 years? It'd be amazing. Yeah, exactly. Um, I mean, yeah, there was never really a platform for it. And and I do think, you know, now that there's, say, you know, these promotions out there, you know, UFC, they have Bellator, th- those sorts of things. It does give anybody an option to to actually excel on a platform and earn a living. But it's a short term living compared to other sports or, or right. other, you know. Yeah. Well, let's step out of this rabbit sure. hole and, and yeah. jump into another one. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Here we were. We, we've told some stories. We heard about your origin story, if you will. And I'm sure you have others. So I'd love for you to share with us your favorite martial arts story. My favorite. Well, there's, there's, there's a couple. Um, but one of the, uh, and this has been, um, well, when I started at Sit Yatong, um, I was, you know, there was a few other women there and I was teaching and um, you'd have an occasional, you know, woman come in to class. And it was another gateway class where it was like a cardio kickboxing, but we we did put Muay Thai into it. And there was this one girl that came in, woman, and she um, wanted to be a, a mixed martial arts fighter. And but you know, to get there, there's a lot of process that you have to go through to get there. But she, we were having a smoker at the gym and a smoker is, um, an in-house unsanctioned, (laughs) um, opportunity to go a hundred percent against your teammates. You you know, you have to go through all the, 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 the process of, of, uh, you know, having a fight or competing. So, you you know, you might have to cut weight. Yeah. You, you have to prepare, you have to train for it. Um, you have a coach that's coaching you, um, all that. So she had begged me, begged me, begged me, begged me. And I had no intention of really doing that, but, um, somehow my name came up and she basically begged me to do it. And, and I was like, okay, you're twisting my arm, but it turns out that, it brought back when I, I can remember being in the in the ring um, and it brought back like this little girl in me that wanted to do what the boys were doing. And so that was a real high for me in a weird, really weird sort of way. <laughs> and then um, shortly after that, um, Crew Toy had been here and I got chance to um, and he's. He's the um, instructor. Uh, he's the son of the instructor over in Thailand um, for Sit Yatong. And he's he's been the lead instructor there for a lot of years. And he was back here at the time, too. So I got to be in the in the ring and he held um, focus mitts for me. And 
that was just sublime. I, I, I was like, wow, this, this particular man is holding focus mitts for me and or tie pads for me. And I'm getting to, you know, kick and punch and he's guiding me through, you know, typical Muay Thai strikes. And I just was in uh, awe and I was, I was blissful. I, I just, because he just had such knowledge and I'm like <laughs> actually standing in the ring with him and then had an opportunity to um, over in Singapore while he was teaching a class at Evolve MMA and, um, he was teaching and I got to open the class with some, um, you know, some warm up drills. And he honored me there in front of a whole male class. And it just was it was really hugely profound for me, really. Um, it, it meant so much to me to be treated as an equal and not looked at as, you know, Oh, well, you're a girl, you can't do that. Or and I just I didn't even have that feeling. It was beyond all that. And he's really centered around that. And I think um, that was a huge, huge, huge um, time in my life, I guess. And it wasn't just the one. It was the combination of all that. And I didn't realize it until now telling it that he was centered around that, which is really um, was really kind of cool. Mm. Wow. Yeah. It, it I, I'm I'm imagining you in front of that group mm. of men and, and just having that honor. What what was going through your head? You know, were I'm I'm imagining you were nervous. Um I, I wasn't nervous. I just did okay. what I typically you know, it's funny because I would do this warm up for the class back at here in Boston and I used to do it all the time and I, I know it was appreciated, but for some reason being there because it was, there were some guys that were professional fighters and there were students and it was all mixed in. It was a fight team class. And for me to lead it and, um, you know, the beginning, the opening drills of it, um, it was just really in, in another country even, you know, it, it, it was yeah, it was just really, um, it was a bit surreal. And I, I was just like, just so blissed out and having fun. It was so fun and, uh, just really happy, just real, real happy. I just felt like I was in my own spirit and, and, um, uncompromised by anything. Uh, yeah, it was really, it was a, really a great, great time. Cool. Now you said that you had a couple stories. If, if you want, we certainly have time. We can tell another one. Well, um, th it was pretty much that, you know, having the the uh, the, the fight. That was like a, a cool time. I'm trying to think. Let me see the um, uh, some. <laughs> uh, I know. I'm that, like, there, wow. there's something behind oh, that laugh. I, 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 I know I, what that I, laugh means. Th well, this one's kind of funny. I was I think I, I was getting my brown belt over at small circle jujitsu and, um, what, how they do it, you know, you go through all the tests you do, you, like they have a, a checklist of things that you're going to do, but at the end of it, um, they give you, um, one attack after another. And typically it's usually about maybe 10 attacks and you, you know, people are lined up and they give you, you know, they'll come at you with either a weapon or, um, whatever they got. You know, so I'm standing there and uh, I didn't know how many it would be, how many attacks it would be. But I knew this was the end of it and a whole lineup of guys. And the first one out was, you know, pretty like, you know, I'm five, five and a half and he's a pretty tall guy. He's probably about, you know, close to six feet, if not a little bit more, you know, like a little taller, you know, big guy. And I'm thinking, oh, my God, there's this whole lineup of guys and some of them have clubs and some of them have this and that, you know, and I'm like, I'm going to I'm exhausted now as it is. And because it was like a full day and I was like, "Ooh, I am going to set the pace for this right now. And I'm going to make this easy because I had seen how they were attacking other students and they were going, you know, 
not a hundred percent, but it's like, you know, they're going kind of hard and I'm like, I, I can't keep this up. So I went low, like the guy came at me. I think he had a club or something went at me. I, I went in low, grabbed him right by the family jewels, if you know what I mean, and just held and looked around like a quick look, but everybody knew this is what it's going to come to. I'm going to drop you guys fast and I'm telling you what I'm going for. Then everybody was just like, they came at me nice and easy after that. <laughs> I went through, I mean, it was still tough, but I set the pace where if anybody was going to get wild with me or, you know, oh, I'm going to like, you know, especially sometimes white belts get a little like, oh, I'm going to have to go against somebody who's a brown belt. I'm going to have to go hard against them. Everybody was like, they all kind of like, you know, shifted their geese and, <laughs> and held their junk in place. And they, they came at me kind of like a little bit, you know, a little more with caution because they didn't know how I, was, I just set the, 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 the total tone of the class. And then later at the end of it, when I was handed my um, my belt or whatever, the instructor said, yeah, we gave you like about, you know, 10 more <laughs> attacks than we usually do because of that whole setup. They just wanted to see what I could do. And uh, it was really funny. But I, I just remember looking around and then one of the guys was uh, happened to be an MMA fighter. And, you know, I don't know if you ever notice it when you you know, when you're in your 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 element and you connect with like a spirit or uh, the spirit or the soul of somebody. And I could just see that little glint in his eye when I did that. He was like, damn, girl, you just totally set the tone of what's going to happen here. You owned this room. And coming from him, the way he looked at me, I was like, yep. Thank you. And, you know, just that it was recognized. It was kind of cool. It was really a cool experience. Nice. nice. Yeah. I'd like you to talk about a time in your life when, you know, maybe things were off, low, however you want to define it, and how you were able to reflect on your martial arts, or maybe it was a physical situation you used your martial arts to move past. Hmm. Well, I've had a lot of loss in my life. Um, I think martial arts has made me really a lot stronger in ways that I never would have imagined. Um, you know, I think um, as human beings, we come up against, um, you know, betrayal. We come up against um, being hurt in, in different ways. Um, whether or not we're the betrayer or somebody else's, we, we're, we're human. And we do things that, you know, we don't feel good about. And sometimes people do things to us that they don't feel that great about either. And we don't feel that great about either. <laughs> and and uh, I've had my share of that. And I, I think who hasn't? And coming out of it, um, I think, you know, you always kind of have to move forward. And in any part of martial art training that I've ever experienced, whether it was with jujitsu or traditional jujitsu or karate or the Muay Thai, um, you're always moving forward. Um, but you got to make sure that you keep yourself intact. Um, and how I mean that is you have to be accountable for or responsible for whatever actions you take. So if you hit someone, um, I guess I'll use this as an analogy. If you hit somebody, you have to kind of own it. Like, you know, if you punch them, you own it. If they punch you back, you know, you either evade it or you take the hit and you're like, okay, I'm going to move forward. Yeah, that hurt. I'm going to move forward. So I think in life when, you know, crappy things happen. Like, I mean, I've been through a divorce that was kind of crappy. My sister died around the same time. That was kind of crappy. Um, it, it's, it's, you, you feel the pain of loss, but you know, you, you have to get up and you have to kind of move forward because you have people around you that you're setting an example for. And I think martial arts has, has, has taught me to be a leader and you have to kind of, yeah, I got to get up. I got to move. I got to keep going forward. Um, this journey is hasn't ended yet. I I still have time here. I'm going to make the best of it. I'm going to be the best possible version of myself. And martial arts has helped me give me the strength, that inner fortitude to be able to do that because I know a side of myself that I didn't know before. Like from that day I hit the bag, 
um, I I recognized something in me that wasn't being um, that wasn't fully being expressed, and martial arts helped me express that. Of all the people that you've trained with and under, you've, you've named a few names. If you had to pick one who was the most influential, the person who, without their guidance or training or whatever it was, you would be a completely different person, a completely different martial artist, who hmm. would that be? Out of the people that I've trained with already? Yeah. I would be some somehow different if I didn't train with them? Yeah, yeah. Who who, who would you, you know, if, if if you were accepting an award... You know, who, who's going to be that first person that you say, you know, without so-and-so, I wouldn't be here today? Um, or is there a person? Maybe there isn't. You know what? I don't think there really is. Um, I think um, that's, a, that's an interesting question in that um, the people that I've attracted into my life, in say, in martial arts... Um, that have been present there for me. Um, they're not the only ones that have, have guided me or, or they've been a reflection, I guess, of something that was in me already. And I, that might sound really egotistical, but um, I don't mean it that way. It's just a, about self discovery, self discovery, and these people might have held a piece of me somewhere, and I had to go collect it. Mm. So it would be a combination of many, many, many people that I've interacted with over over my lifetime. Yeah, um, which is. Uh, a bit profound and I'm, I'm feeling like, you know, as I'm saying this and describing it, it's almost like, Oh wow. I didn't know that about me until really this moment. Well, cool. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I, what I'm hearing from you, doesn't sound egotistical at all. It sounds like another way of expressing when the student is ready, the master will appear, which exists in our world so much that it's become a cliche. It's something that we see in, martial arts films dating back quite a ways. Mm. And a lot of us have experienced it. And you're just looking at the situation from a slightly different perspective. So I, it, it doesn't come across that way to me. Mm. Now, if we flip the question, who would you want to train with? That's kind of a fun question because there's yeah. just, um, just some really cool people out there that trained in martial arts that are really neat. Um, I used to think, um, which is kind of funny, Anderson Silver, just because of the way he moves and he interacts, like when he would, um, f when he would fight in the ring uh, mm. or in the cage, um, I just thought his style and he was exploring so many different things. I not necessarily train with him, but I like to go see how he trains and like, just be like, you know, vicariously like watching him train. And I think Conor McGregor would be another one. Um, he has recently been training with Ido Portel and I'm not sure if you're familiar with him, I, but I am a, familiar with him. He, he is, he is a brilliant man and, and someone I look up to when it comes to movement. Yeah, and I think, um, you know, seeing movement, you know, him use movement and um, and then Conor McGregor kind of going into that. And then it's not just their, their martial arts aspect of it. It's just how they create their world and their life and, and what's important to them and the people that are behind them. Uh, I find that fascinating. And, and two, that there's such per, um, maybe perfectionist isn't really the right term, but they execute um, their craft well, and they're really um, focused, and and I admire that. I find Ronda Rousey another one too. I admire, even though she's trained in different things, but it's how she's living her life, and she is a true martial artist. Um, I, another one that I, um, Misha Tate, mm. I um, I'm. She wasn't. I, I wasn't always a fan of hers. I, you know, I, and now I, I look at her 
far differently now that she's re- kind of a little more removed from uh, being a fighter and then how she's interacting with um, other fighters and training other um, practitioners coming up. I think she would be kind of really cool to train with a little bit. Um, but um, yeah, I think, uh, you know, Jackie Chan might be kind of fun too. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Oh, who who wouldn't want to train with Jackie Chan? I mean, come on. She's hilarious. Like, uh, you know, like just, yeah, or Jet Li or something like that. Yeah. Uh, just they are, you know, and if Bruce Lee was still alive, um, he's another one. Um, just just sitting in the room with them, you know, and, sure. and listening to them speak or watching them, I think that would be uh, really kind of a cool thing to do. Mm, absolutely. Mm. Do you, do you watch movies? You know, you mentioned a couple martial arts actors there. Is that, is that a thing for you? Yeah. I, um, you know what I recently just watched and I, I, I'm like, Oh my God, this was so good. Was, um, um, atomic blonde. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, Oh my word. Her moves in that were so, you know, just amazing to me. And I, I don't know who um, choreographed all the the um, the moves that she she performed in that movie. I, I was just like, wow, it was just a cool movie. I really liked it. <laughs> it was a fun movie. I, I, I certainly enjoyed watching it. And it's one that hasn't come up too much on the show. Of, of course, Charlize Theron is the star I, for anyone that, that hasn't seen it but i was actually just working on on pulling up who did that and of course the imdb mobile website is not the easiest to yeah. use i should have um i i just thought of that off the top of my head just because i watched it and i and I, I i could watch it again just for i mean I, of course i loved the style of the clothing and everything and that she was yeah. just sidelines in it but um yeah i just thought it was really um well choreographed and i usually you know i like i like all the funny stuff um i i mean i like jackie chan all all his and i can't think of any of the names of his movies but i always enjoyed watching him like when he does the you know the, the drunken kind of master sorts of yeah stuff. And, and just how he is able to do all these you know stunts um and then um, I always liked the Jet Li. I always liked the way he moved in his movies and the philosophical kind of, you know, master, him being a master and always, you know, that good and evil kind of thing, yeah. and always going for the good. Uh, there were some other really good ones. What is it, Crouching Tiger? And then there was that one, um, uh, it was kind of a funny one. Um, can't think of the name of it. It's okay. There's yeah. a bunch of them. Yeah, there's so many. There's there so are. Many. There Jeez. are. There. Those are usually like if there's going to be something on like a martial arts movie, I was like, oh, I have to see it. <laughs> if it looks really good, there's going to be a lot of good striking. And <laughs> I don't know why. I'm a little twisted. <laughs> I think I think we all are. I think you have to be as as I certainly did not coin this phrase, but I don't know where it came from. The idea that we get together, we choose to hit our friends yeah you know we're, we're we're kicking our friends in the head or punching them punching them in the face in the face i mean that takes <laughs> a special kind of person it does so. now how about books um i actually uh, just for this um i'm actually getting i just ordered a couple books um that have been written by um some low, some fighters and uh, some judo practitioners. It's one's Ronda Rousey's uh, "My Fight, Your Fight," mm, and yeah. um, Kayla Harrison. Uh, yep. She's also uh, you, fighting back. You like the judo women, it seems. Well, you know what? Um, they are. They get a, some attention um, because maybe they're Olympic athletes. Um, and they're a little more known out there for that. And they actually came from, you know, they trained in this area with, uh, Jimmy Pedro and, um, yeah, I don't know, you know, they're, they're just in, uh, yeah. And, and they have books, 
you know, and I think um, they are a pathway for other women to come up. I think that's probably why I'm a little fascinated with them. Sure. Sure. And of course, you know, I've, I've reached out to both of them. No, no one from Ronda Rousey's camp has written back, but um, I have had some emails exchanged with folks on Kayla's end. So fingers crossed that that will happen at some point. We'll have her on the show. Awesome. Yeah. Now, what are your goals? You know, you're, you're still talking about martial arts in the present tense. So I'm going to well, imagine there are things you're looking to accomplish. Um, I, well, I'd like to, I, I've been out of training for a few months just because I moved. Um, I do need to get back to it. Um, but, um, I am in the process of, of, um, working on this podcast. So I'll be interviewing other women that are involved in martial arts. And so that's kind of, um, a goal and then creating some, uh, digital, online products for, you know, that involve martial arts, uh, training, I guess, and then maybe helping MMA fighters to help them recover from injuries or keep them injury free, uh, that sort of thing. So I'm kind of looking at those things, uh, as far as training goes, um, I was training in an MMA class, like learning to do takedowns again, and and then I I just bounced back into doing the Muay Thai kickboxing because I just love it. It's just so much fun. Just you know, going into a class and and uh, and yeah. and maybe light sparring, any of that, or learning a new technique or learning a new combination. Um, just those things. It's very simple. I don't have. Um, it's just staying consistent in it you know, over the long haul, over the long term, you know, for years and years and, and, and not, um, and not, not doing it, you know, um, I think that's pretty much the goal is just staying really consistent and going in and doing a class and keep learning. Cause you never know who the instructor is going to be too. Like, you know, what are they, what are they going to teach you that day? It's going to yeah. come up, you know? Awesome. And of course, any, of the women that have been on this show that I might be able to make an introduction to if you want, by all means, happy to. Sure. That would be great. Thank you. You're welcome. Hey, we're, we're all in this together, you know, and, and, <laughs> you know, there are people out there that, and, and, you know, once in a while I get an email, you know, you're, you're helping other martial arts podcasts. You know, one of my best friends in the martial arts is Jared Wilson, who hosts, Martial Thoughts, which is probably the podcast most similar to this one out there. And, you know, we've become good friends because of that, you know, and and I look at it as a parallel to martial arts. We're all doing similar things, but we're doing them in our own way for our own reasons. And why not lift everybody up? You know, let's make each other better. Absolutely. That's a great, great way to be. And, I, you know, unifying people and... Yeah. Yeah, there, there shouldn't be this um, fear of, oh, you know, they're going to, you know, tap into your business or whatever right. it is, you know, because it's like, no, you're going to have your, you're going to develop your audience. People are going to like you for you and they're going to listen to you, you for you for very specific reasons because exactly. of your originality. And yeah. people don't realize that. I know. <laughs> people are silly. Yes. Now, if some of the non-silly people out there listening, if, or, or even the silly ones, if they want to reach out to you, you know, how can they find out about you and your podcast and the other stuff that you've got going on? You know, let's call this commercial time and just let it rip. Okay, so it would be um, for my podcast. It's Evolve WMMA. Um, I do have a blog there too. I'll be writing about you know some of the current fights that are coming up too with say the UFC or Bellator or Invicta FC, and and then I also do an outdoor fitness boot camp if you're in the Boston area. Okay. And yes, and that's Evolve Boot Camp. So Evolve is one of those names that it just goes with everything that I do. <laughs> so nice. if you just look for that, you'll right. find me. <laughs> and are you on social media? I am. Um, I have a Facebook page for women's mixed martial arts. It's I love WMMA. And then um, I, yeah, that would probably be it. And then Evolve Bootcamp. So, yeah. Okay. Well, of course, we're going to link all that stuff over on the show notes, whistlekickmartialartsradio.com. So those of you 
that might be new to the show that didn't know about that or those of you driving, you know, let's not risk vehicular manslaughter as you try and jot down domain names. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you for being here. And I'd love for you to send us off with just some parting words, wisdom or, or what have you for the folks listening today. Oh, well, just if you're if you're on a martial arts journey or you haven't started one, you might want to get into the gym and try it out. It's it's a long road ahead, but it's a wonderful journey. You'll make great friends, uh, great acquaintances. There's just a great group of folks that that train in martial arts. And um, I love it. And I think you will, too. One of my favorite things about this show is that we get such different people from different backgrounds, different experiences to talk about their journeys through the martial arts. And I feel like that makes me not only a better martial artist and host of this show, but a better person. And that was how I felt even from the beginning of today's episode that Ms. Divine has a different perspective, not just as a woman, but as someone who's trained in different arts, who started at a different time in life and really has embraced that and made martial arts her life and her lifestyle. You know, I respect that. So thank you, Ms. Divine, for coming on the show. If you want the show notes, those are at whistlekickmartialartsradio.com. We've got pictures and a bunch of other great stuff. Check that out. If you want to follow us on social media, we are at Whistlekick. Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, Instagram, a bunch of other places. And if you want to get a hold of me directly, you can. It's Jeremy at Whistlekick.com. Hopefully you'll head on over to Whistlekick.com. Check out the stuff that we're making. And we've got new stuff adding all the time. Seriously, if you saw the pile of samples, products in development on my desk right now, it's insane. We're growing so fast. So much fun. Kind of scary, though. <laughs> That's a whole other episode. Maybe we'll talk about that sometime. All right. Enough of the sidetracking, those tangents. You got enough of that today, didn't you? All right. Until next time, train hard, smile, and have a great day. 